students of Gay Ed Elementary School. Good morning to the superintendent of schools. Good morning to the administrative staff of Gay Ed, its faculty and its staff members, and to all honored guests. It is a great pleasure for me to be here this morning to talk about the opening of the Gay Ed Elementary School. I can't believe the Gay Ed School is 51 years old. It opened on September 1965. I had the privilege of opening the Gay Head School with three other administrators. Mr. Richard Stapleton was the principal, Mr. Henry Race was the assistant principal, Mrs. Gladys Bettina was the coordinator for grades K, 1, 2, and 3, and I was the coordinator for grades 4, 5, and 6. We worked for a year and a half prior to the opening of Gay Head School to get the school ready to be opened. We had to purchase furniture, we had to purchase equipment, we had to purchase textbooks and library books, we had to do schedules. The biggest job we had, we had to hire 62 elementary teachers. That took us quite a bit of time to do. Out of the 62 elementary teachers we hired, six of them had experience in the field of education. Gay had opened with 1,350 students, K-6. That meant we had to have 23 school buses to handle all the students and transport them home. How do you line up 23 buses for dismissal? We discussed it quite a while, and we finally decided that the best way to do it was to have bus stalls. I'm proud to say that today, most of the schools in the Wabinger Central School District use bus stalls. We did open on schedule. We did have a PA system. However, we had no intercom system. That meant that there were wires hanging in every single hallway of the school because the men were installing the intercom system. We had a kitchen, the equipment was in the kitchen, but none of the equipment was connected. So therefore, we served sandwiches and milk for about three weeks. Blinds were a problem. They mixed up the order for the blinds. So some classrooms had blinds, other classrooms had no blinds. It took us about a month to get the remain in blinds into the classrooms. Uh, there was no playground. The grass was planted in October, so recess was held on the blacktop. You have to remember that this was a farm. The name of the farm was the Emmerdine Farm. The Wapinger Central School District purchased, if I remember correctly, about 25 acres of the farm. That meant we had plenty of visitors. We had deer, we had rabbits, we had raccoons, we had groundhogs, and we had mice. Did we have mice? The kindergarten wing was so inundated with mice that we had to have a commercial company come and take care of the problem for us. we had, which was kind of funny, we had a male student in an intermediate wing who brought a wrench to school. And he would go into the immediate boys' room and loosen the elbows underneath the sink. So when the boys went in to wash their hands, the elbow would fall off and the boys would wet their sneakers. This went on for about a week and a half. And we tried to find the young man we stationed ourselves in the bathrooms. We had the custodians stationed in the bathrooms. Long story short, we never found the young man. And it stopped about two weeks after. Was that we had the PA system working. So we kept the PA system on in that boys' room. And when the students went to use the boys' room and washed their hands, we would get on the PA and tell them, OK, you finished your business. Now get back to class. One of the third grade students, who was in Mrs. Stone's third grade, went back to the classroom and told Mrs. Stone, that Mrs. Stone, do you know after you flush the toilet, 
The toilet tells you to go back to class when you finished. The parents began asking us, when are we going to hold an open house? We finally decided to hold the open house on November 5th, 1965. Does anyone remember what happened on November 5th, 1965? Well, let me remind you what happened on November 5th, 1965. The entire, the entire East Coast of the United States and parts of Canada experienced a blackout. No electricity. It was a massive blackout. Nothing moved for 48 hours. It was terrible. There went open house. We finally had open house held after Thanksgiving. We wanted the staff to work together and become a team. And that was very, very difficult because number one, it was a new building. Number two, everyone was new in the building. Primary teachers had no idea who the intermediate teachers were. So the four administrators decided that we would do a spaghetti and meatball dinner. We did all the cooking, we did all the serving. The faculty was invited, the kitchen staff was invited, and the custodial staff was invited. And it really worked out fine. It did gel everyone together, and we finally began to operate normally. Mr. Raish left Gayhead School and became the principal of Evans School. I became the principal of Gayhead School, and I only stayed there one year. In 1968, I became the principal of Sheaf Road, and I left Gayhead. If you turn the number around, in 1986, I came back to Sheaf Road as the principal, and it was a wonderful experience. One of the biggest problems we had when I first arrived at Gayhead School, I had to meet with architects and engineers. We had to replace the entire roof of the building. What, strike me, what struck me very funny is that the cost to repair the roof cost more than the original building cost 25 years ago. Students of Gayhead School, you have a fine tradition. The students of Gay Head have become productive members of society. They have become teachers, doctors, lawyers, nurses, heads of big corporations, and military leaders. I'm sure you will continue this fine tradition, and I wish you the best of luck in the years to come. Once again, thank you very much for the honor and privilege of addressing you this morning. Take care. Thank you very much.